I am Jeffrey Villard Wen in the Ming Empire campaign from the Imjin War of Korea, an amazing mod for Medieval 2 Total War Kingdoms. Last time we just managed to rescue the Korean king from certain death and saved his kingdom. Here is again the situation at Hanseong, the Korean capital. Two large Japanese armies are besieging it. But now we have at least numerical superiority. So we are now at war with the Toyotomi clan, that is with the Japanese. And here is an event that I have no idea what it is saying. We are in position two uh, in production, position two also militarily. So here is the overall ranking. We are the red faction in second place. The yellow faction are the Japanese, the Toyotomi clan. And here's the situation in Mongolia. We have destroyed the Mongols. We took their capital, killed their Khan, and they all went rebel. And here's one of the Mongol armies. Here it is. It has a lot of cavalry and some infantry. And we are going to attack them. We are attacking them. In fact, we have plenty of this uh, green artillery. They are some sort of dragon fire something artillery. Here we are in Mongolia, it's still the winter. And here is our army, we are deployed on a hill. Our enemy is also deployed on a hill, but we're going to make them move forward by bombarding them with our artillery. There are some units that can lay stakes in um, uh, this mod, in the engine War Korea mod, and so we put some stakes in front of our artillery. One of the artillerymen here stood in front of one of the cannons and uh, paid for his imbecility with his life. And so the uh, Mongols have brought uh, horse archers quite close to our lines, possibly because of the slope of the hill. But just as it is hard for them to aim at us, so it is hard for us to aim at them. And so they brought the units close, and that's very convenient for us. We also have these heavy uh, pike-like spearmen, and we bring them forward to scare the enemy cavalry off. We also have these uh, musketeers here. And some drummers banging us some drums and singing along. Here, one of our cavalry units, it's a heavy spear unit, this heavy lance unit. They are swordsmen once they get engaged in melee. They have been engaged with one of the uh, Mongol units. So we'll watch actually two Mongol battles today. And the Mongols are the flavor of the month. They have been the flavor of the month for a couple of months now. So we routed uh, this Mongol unit, they're going downhill, more Mongols are attacking our men here, they've gone uphill and attacked our pikemen or spearmen. They seem to be fighting as pikemen. Artillery keeps firing, we clearly have the upper hand. And it looks like our cavalry has attacked the flank of the of the Mongols there and have routed them. Okay, and I guess the commentators say the Mongols have been routed. Okay, one of our horse archer units has also been routed but we won this battle and so here's our general and he's running after the um, defeated enemy so it looks very glorious unfortunately there's snow and ice on the uniform of his bodyguards
We will get to see these units in um, the summer months. They are very beautiful units, very nicely done. So the Mongols are routed, we're attacking prisoner, anyone who is running away. And a beautiful sunset or sunrise, whatever it is, it looks more like sunset. Very atmospheric skies. This unit is down to two men, they're taking prisoners, they're routed enemy. And here they've been uh, reinforced by some more heavy cavalry. And this is the battlefield, the battle is over. It was a clear victory. We lost about a third of our army, but the enemy army has been completely destroyed. We start, I believe, a war with the Mongols, if I'm not mistaken. So this is uh, the uh, result at the end. Our cavalry did very well. Several types of um, cavalry units uh, uh, killed more than a hundred of the enemy and took lots of prisoners. Here we're back in Korea. This is Han Seong. There is one army uh, that is besieging Han Seong. A second army uh, was actually besieging, but then they walked away during the fighting. And we are moving from game turn 30 to 31. The Koreans are, are requesting assistance from us, and of course we will agree. So whatever happened, happened. The Mongols, uh, the Japanese are back. I guess here we offered uh, a uh, general to become a member of the royal family to be adopted. I said yes. And Ming troops arrive to support the Joseon Kingdom of Korea. On May 8th, 1592, the King of Joseon, Yi Yeon, fled to Pyongyang. However, the first, second and third armies of the Japanese invasion force broke through the defenses at Imjin. Once again on the road, King Seonjo fled Pyongyang on June 11, 1592 and continued northwards to Uiju, requesting Ming aid along the way. At the time, the eight provinces of Korea were lost and only Pyongyang and the area close to the Liaodong border remained unoccupied by Japanese forces. Seonjo Yi Yeon knew that without Ming assistance the Joseon Kingdom would have no way to recover. Again and again he sent messengers to the Ming requesting help, not only giving official messages to the Wan Li Emperor, but also various high-ranking personnel, officials and eunuchs within the Ming court. He was even willing to let Korea be annexed to the Ming Empire if doing so would mean that the Joseon Kingdom would be saved. Such was his desperation. The Ming realized that the Japanese were planning to use Korea as a passage to China. So therefore, by protecting the Joseon Kingdom, they were protecting themselves. Therefore, they assented to Seonjo's request to send troops from the Quanjian forts of Liaodong across the Yalu River. Well, in actual fact, they landed by boat in our campaign and they saved Han Xiong just in time. We have more ships coming. You can see two fleets coming. Here's the first fleet, brought reinforcements from uh, the south of China. And so here's the army that was involved in the fighting at Haseong last time. So we'll join the cavalry with the newly arrived army, and um, the rest will put them in the ships. 
we can use them as reinforcements, or maybe some of them can be sent back to China to get retrained. So they've gone into the ships there. We have a strong fleet, so our ships are safe. There you see, it's a very strong fleet. Here's our capital, Jingshu, and we have been uh, building up armies here to help the Koreans. So we can send all these units over as reinforcements. We will put them in uh, ships, and yeah, they'll slowly find the way to the Korean kingdom. Going by land would take much longer. These are the sorts of forts, I guess, one of those forts that that message was talking about. I think it's part of the Great Wall of China. And so we have more units here, so we can combine them. Uh, actually, they will not reach. So I'm going to wait and then send the fleet close by, then they will jump on the fleet and then join up with the other force and head for Korea. Okay, so here we're back in Mongolia. Here's another Mongolian army that's gone rebel. We have a very large army of our own, so we're going to attack them in battle. So we have some uh, reinforcements as well. Once again, we have plenty of cavalry and some heavy artillery. Okay, we're in the spring now. There was some more of that weird and wonderful Chinese artillery. Just so, here's our army once again. We're camped on a hill, and this time our enemy is down in the plains below. Well, it's some kind of hilly country, but we have the biggest hill. And uh, on the flanks and the wings, we have cavalry, of course. And reinforcements have arrived. So artillery has started uh, hitting uh, the Mongols who are down below. Cavalry in the wings. The Mongols are slowly moving up the hill. And the fighting on the wings has begun. The Mongols are trying to attack one of our units. Wow, look at this! Hailstorm of fire. We have these uh, hand grenade throwers or something. Uh, they have these special guns that throw some rockets, that fire some rockets or grenades. We seem to have killed the enemy captain, the commander of the enemy army. We have also various archers and so on. We have spearmen at the front and then we have missile units on the hillsides and cavalry on the flanks. We also have some uh, horse archers you can see the wonderful units I was talking about. The skins are very nicely done. And the Mongols have been routed, so the uh, Ming cavalry has routed the Mongols. So the Mongols are not unbeatable after all. Here we have a unit of hand gunners. Uh, so this is a very useful unit. They also have spears. So once they run out of uh, shot or gunpowder, then they charge the enemy with their spears. Okay, so when the Chinese charge, they say char with hard urge. So we routed our enemy.
So these uh, wonderful units again. So another glorious victory. I don't know how we defeated the Mongols, but we did. It was quite a surprise when their Khan died and they all went rebel. And here's that wonderful artillery. The Chinese have the most amazing and weird artillery. And as you see, we're camped on a hill. Our general is on top of the hill. So that was an easy victory. <laughs> okay, that was the end of the battle. So uh, we lost only 300 men and we destroyed the Mongols. A couple of units got decorated, mostly cavalry units. Gained in experience. Here are again the results. You can see our cavalry did very well. As you might expect. And back in uh, Korea, Han Seong is under siege as well as various other places here. Jik, Jik something or other is under siege. Maybe we'll get to see another siege in the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching.